Hey there, Organogram traders and investors. It's Rod with Pow Group. Welcome back on the Pursuit of Wealth, your home for MJ stocks, crypto assets, news, and interviews. Also, I'm the best MJ community. Today is Tuesday, May 14th. Hope you're doing well. And in this video, we're going to be discussing Organogram's Q2 2024 earnings. They did have a pretty big miss in terms of revenue. We'll look at the numbers. We'll go over some highlights. I'll give my thoughts and opinions as well on the technicals. We'll bring up the OGI chart. And we'll take a look at a bearish pattern that is signaling we could see more downside from here. But as always, this is not financial advice. This is for entertainment purposes only. I'm not a financial advisor and you should never buy or sell anything based on anything that I say or anything that I write. But overall, not a bad report from OGI. We'll go over the estimates here in just a moment. And full disclosure, I do own the stock in my portfolio. If you haven't seen my MJ Portfolio 2024 update with percentages, I go over my entire holdings with the weighting of each in my portfolio. Before we get to it though, make sure to smash the like. It helps support me in the channel. If you're new, you can subscribe, tick the bell, all the good stuff. You'll be notified on any future videos or when I go live. You can also follow us over on X, formerly Twitter. The handle for that is at group pow. Going to be using that as my platform of choice going forward. Also, I made a couple posts with regards to the meme stock craze, GameStop, AMC, absolutely rocking again today. And I made a video yesterday, could Tilray Brands and SNDL, SNDL be next? And sure enough, those were the ones leading today. SNDL was up uh, almost 20% at one point. Tilray was up, I think, about 15%. And this showed up to swaggystocks.com. If you scroll down, it gives you the stock market sentiment. In the last 12 hours, you can filter that. Uh, but you can see SNDL and Tilray's there. OGI is going to be an interesting one because OGI, if you take a look at the quote here, it's got a pretty sh like small float, only 65.84 million shares. But as we know, we were expecting some consolidation. They announced dilution as well whenever they started the monthly bounce. And we still have yet to change the monthly trend on OGI. So we're starting the monthly higher low now. Uh, but you can see here, uh, Tilray and SNDL, they're really the only MJ's, uh, MJ stocks that were listed there. So we'll take a look at the report here. So they reported their second quarter fiscal 2024 results. And this was for the period ending March 31st, 2024. If we take a look at the actuals, revenue came in at 37.63 million Canadian. And we'll go through the estimates here and overall consensus, but EPS came in at negative 0.227. So essentially to get the EPS, you just take the, uh, the loss, net income loss, and then divide it by the amount of shares. So 27 million and change divided by uh, 119 million shares and change gives you negative 0.227. So that's exactly what they have there. And then if we bring up trading view, they were forecasting a little bit of a different, uh, I'm not sure why it was so low or so high here. So investing.com said 46.9 million for revenue came in at 37.63 million, as I mentioned, and they were forecasting negative 1.06 for EPS earnings per share came in at negative 0.227. And then, like I said, on TradingView, they were forecasting 37.635 million for revenue, and EPS was negative 0.087. And then on Moomoo, I really like their platform as well. Based on two analysts, they were saying revenue was forecasted at 38.261, came in at 37. Uh, let's see here. Yeah, so EPS. Yeah, it was the EPS here. So they said negative uh, 0.09. And it came in at negative 0 0.143. So what I went ahead and did is I added up all of those estimates, divided them by three. So we had 40.932 for revenue, and we had negative 0 0.412 on EPS. So they did miss pretty big in terms of both of those with regards to their actuals. So the stock currently sitting just basically flat on the day today. Uh, we do have a head and shoulders as well that we're looking at, and we could see an EMA 12 and 26 bear cross here on the weekly time frame as well. So it's not looking too hot at the moment. And again, I mentioned on the monthly time frame that we still needed that monthly higher low, this huge move off the low in the monthly bounce. We went up about 200%, but we didn't change the monthly trend. We were no longer in a monthly downtrend with the lower high, lower low pattern being broken. So once we got above 269 Canadian, we were no longer in a downtrend. But as of right now, the trend's flat. We still need the higher low, which we're forming now. You know that we're st the in the higher low is indicative by the loss of the previous candle low. So once we lose the low of the previous candle, we're consolidating, pulling back. If you break the high of the previous candle here, we're bouncing, right? So we'll take a look at the uh, technicals a little bit more in detail here in just a moment. But we'll go over the report. 
not going to go over everything, but I did want to just highlight a few things. 21% growth in the recreational net revenue year over year. First Jupiter private placement tranche closed, adding 41.5 million of cash, bringing Organogram's closing cash balance at the quarter end to 83.6 million. So not a boatload of cash, but they do have British American Tobacco as a partner. And uh, overall, uh, they're trending in the right direction, in my opinion. And Organogram is very differentiated, right? We know that's one thing we notice about the Canadian market now is that companies are very differentiated. They all seem to be doing a little bit of a different style and focusing on different you know, aspects of the industry, right? Whereas, you know, in the U.S., a lot of the operators look very similar. It kind of reminds me of the early days in Canada. If you remember Canada, everything, everybody was trying to be everything to everybody. Whereas now, you know, Organogram is just focusing 100% on MJ revenue. SNDL, you know, we're into, they're vertically integrated as well, but they have retail, uh, they're into retail for MJ and alcohol. Tilray's into, you know, a little bit of everything as well. Uh, they're into actual manufacturing alcohol though. So everything, like I said, everything is a very differentiated. You look at Canopy, it's now basically an MSO, a multi-state operator because it has acreage. It's looking to acquire that, Jetty, Juana. And then they also have their ancillary business through stores and Bickle. So like I said, there's a lot to like about these LPs and uh, overall, uh, they're very differentiated, and I like the fact that Organogram's 100% MJ focused as well. It's a great uh, addition to a diversified portfolio, in my opinion. Subsequent to the quarter end, closed 28.8 million oversubscribed market offering, which, when combined with the remaining two anticipated Jupiter tranches, will increase cash position to an additional 110 million. There you go. Company's recent investment in Steady State LLC adds to growing U.S. portfolio, which includes Phylos Bioscience Inc. Organogram's U.S.-based strategic investments may benefit from expected change in rescheduling of MJ by the Drug Enforcement Administration from Schedule 1 to Schedule 3. So they had held number one position in milled flour, hash, ingestible extracts, pure CBD gummies, number two in edibles, infused pre-rolls, number three in pre-rolls, number three in dried flour, and held overall third position in market share of Canada. They have number one market share and position in Atlanta, Canada, where they're based out of Number three in Ontario and top five licensed producer in every Canadian province. Company shred brand surpassed 200 million in annual sales as a result of brand loyalty, product quality, and consistent innovation. Completed the first international flower shipment to Sanity Group in Germany and first flower shipment to 4C Labs for UK distribution. Subsequent to quarter end, so multi-country operator, to quote Boris Jordan from Cureleaf, subsequent to quarter end, signed two new international supply agreements in Australia and the UK. Successfully completed preliminary European Union Good Manufacturing Practices, otherwise known as EU GMP audit of the Moncton, uh, New Brunswick facility. Closed uh, strategic investments in OBX of US 2 million structured as a convertible note. And their pro forma cash position is approximately 195 million. We'll go through, there were some comments from Bina Goldberg, the CEO. Orga Organogram is now the only licensed producer among the top three licensed producers in Canada with significant cash, negligible debt, and sizable funds earmarked for strategic international investments. We have also made solid progress toward our goal of diversifying our exposure to international markets through our Jupiter, Jupiter Fund and increasing our customer base abroad. So they go through some Canadian recreational market Highlights, if you want to check that out on your own time, research and product development, there was a part I want to mention here, Organogram and British American Tobacco continue to work together through their PDC on new work streams to develop innovative technologies in the edible, vape and beverage categories in addition to new disruptive inhalation formats aimed at addressing the biggest consumer pain points that exist in the category today. Organogram is preparing to deliver new products in these spaces and launch priority uh, the launch priority includes gummies, which will feature a new nano emulsion technology. And uh, I, I definitely enjoy their, their their shred gummies for sure. So interest is to see what they come out in terms of innovation and new products. In terms of international, Q2 fiscal 2024, the company completed its first shipment to Sanity Group in Germany, as I mentioned, and 4C Labs for UK distribution and reported international shipments totaling 2.1 million. Subsequent to quarter end, the company signed two new international supply agreements in Australia and in the UK, and the company is also evaluating more international expansion opportunities in the US and overseas, propelled by the Jupiter strategic investment pool. So as we know, Canopy taking that exchangeable share structure, SNDL following suit as well with their Sunstream um, vehicle as, as well. So we're starting to see the NASDAQ warm up to Canadian companies with US exposure. And as we know, Boris Jordan, to quote him again from Gearleaf, said they're in talks with a U.S. major exchange about potential uplisting. 
So if they're starting to warm up to Canadian companies, the NASDAQ with exposure to the U.S., might that uh, be the NASDAQ that Cureleaf was speaking to? Very, very possible. So things are getting interesting, and we're starting to see these multi-country operators now, uh, which, again, I said MSOs will become LPs. LPs will become MSOs. Cureleaf acquired a small operator here in Canada called Northern Green Canada. It's happening right in front of our eyes, and it's multi-country now. It's not just MSO. It's not just U.S. It's not just Canada. There's going to be winners and losers both sides of the border in Canada and U.S., and then abroad as well. So key financial results for the second quarter of 2024. Compared to prior period, overall net revenue decreased 5% to $37.6 million from $39.5 million in Q2 fiscal 2023, primarily due to a, reduc a reduction in international revenue. So a slight decrease of about 5%, nothing to worry about in my opinion. Adjusted gross margin was $11.6 million, or 31% of net revenue, compared to $13.4 million, or 34% in Q2. The decrease in adjusted gross margin rate was primarily due to lower international sales, SG&A, so recognized a 4.2 million provision for a receivable, receivable associated with its Israeli customer, Candoc. Net loss was 27.1 million compared to 7.5 million in Q2. The increase in net loss from the comparative period is primarily due to lower unrealized gain on changes in fair value of biological assets and change in fair value of derivative liabilities of 12.5 million. And then adjusted EBITDA was negative 1 million compared to 5.6 million adjusted EBITDA in Q2 fiscal 2023. The decline was primarily attributable to lower international sales compared to Q2 fiscal 2023. So yeah, negative 1 million, which negatively impacted the adjusted gross margin rate compared to the prior year period. So they have their excise taxes here as well. It was 19,797,000 out of their gross revenue of 57 million four hundred and twenty five thousand adjusted gross margin like i said uh, 31 compared to 34 percent the prior year in the same quarter and net loss negative so yeah 27 million and then it was prior 7.488 million before that total assets 331 million and change total liabilities 59 million and change so round that up to 60 million so decent in terms of that total Fully diluted shares, you can see here 119 million and change. Net loss has reported 27 million and change. So if you just divide that by that, it gives you your EPS, earnings per share. And they had their conference call as well. If anybody did join the call, let me know. I wasn't able to attend, but I'll see if I can join the replay. Let me know if you were on the call and if anything stood out to you on that call. But as I mentioned, more than likely gonna see monthly higher low form. And we started the monthly consolidation last month with a loss of the low in March. So we lost the low again of April in May. So monthly consolidation continues. And like I said, it could even continue further as we do have a head and shoulders pattern forming here. And we have an EMA 12 and 26 bear cross as we potentially head to uh, toward weekly oversold. And as the chart goes, show me the chart or the saying goes, show me the chart. I'll tell you the news. You can see here low, high. We still needed that higher low and monthly uptrend. And then that dilution news came out right on that big monthly balance, but smart in terms of the company, you know, the timing of that, right? As share prices start to go up in MJ, we need to be aware of that. And there was a small dilution news from Tilray as well. Canopy did it as well with 50 million. So this is something that we need to expect when prices are in the dumps and they've been beaten down for so long and they start to recover, you know, 100%, 200%, we need to expect dilution, especially if they're not profitable. So OGI in the weekly time frame, we did have a stochastic and a MACD bear cross as well. We close below the 10 week moving average. We're in a weekly downtrend with lower highs, lower lows. There's, it, it's not looking too hot here in the short to medium term. But like I said, good news is, is that we can form that monthly higher low and then try to get the higher high and confirm a monthly uptrend and join some of its peers, right? We know SNDL, High Tide, BFF, all in, and Cron as well, all in monthly uptrends. So it's just a matter of time before OGI. I think the next that could do it is Tilray, then OGI, then CGC and ACB more than likely by the looks of the technicals right now. But we are approaching that 50 weekly there at 162 USD as well. So we'll see if that can act as support. And we do have the 200 day moving average at 162. So a lot of support in that 162 area in terms of the, uh, the US dollar denominated value. And then if we go to the NASDAQ here and just chart our weekly head and shoulders, I'll just get a rough idea here for you to where we could be going. So it's saying 
roughly 120 on the U.S. side. And like I said, that EMA 12 and 26 bear cross not looking too hot. We did have a golden cross, but a lot of names in the MJ space saw a golden cross and then a death cross, and they're gearing up for another one. And we usually get that final shakeout before the big breakout. And again, uh, just because a golden cross happens doesn't mean we're going to the moon tomorrow. And again, the fact that we didn't confirm the monthly uptrend is the most important factor. And we're just looking for that monthly higher low now. So if you're looking for entries, not telling you to buy, sell, or hold, might be a decent entry here on this monthly consolidation, looking for a monthly higher low. But realistically, starting to scale in, you can start to scale in. If you're looking for buy ideas somewhere around 175, 150, 125, that's probably how I would structure it. But I may look to add one more time around 150 and again around 125 if we get there. But let me know your thoughts and opinions on this report. Going into it there, if you're on the call, let me know if there was anything that stood out to you there as well. It's Rod with Power Group. Thanks again for joining us on the Pursuit of Wealth. And we'll see you again on the next video.